Algebra 1 12.4b graph a quadratic function with a table of values. Now we are in chapter 12 lesson 4. This is video B so it's the second video for this lesson. If you haven't seen 12.4a then you could get lost or confused. My advice is to go into the description of this video and click on the link for 12.4a and watch really quick what a quadratic function is. Okay, so we're going to graph one with a table of values. When we graph a quadratic function, the vertex is the highest or lowest point of the parabola. So here's the parabola. The vertex could be the highest point or the lowest point. See? And the points that form a parabola occur in pairs that have the same y coordinate. Parabolas that are represented as y equals ax squared will always have the vertex at the origin 0, 0, and the axis of symmetry will be the y-axis. So here's the axis of symmetry right here, as we discussed in the last video. And if you look at this, here's the standard form of a quadratic function. Look at it. It's got the plus bx plus c at the end. This doesn't. It's just a short little baby version of it, isn't it? Well, when it's little like this, we know that the axis of symmetry is going to be the y-line and we know that its vertex is going to be at 0, 0. See? When it's little like this, it's set like that. Okay? So we can graph a quadratic function by making a table of values and plotting the ordered pairs. Just like we did with a linear function. When the domain x of the function is the set of real numbers, the graph is a parabola. It's u-shaped like this, facing either up or down. For the function of x to equal 2x squared, that's in that form, isn't it? See? We've got the a is the red 2. We can graph this and find the domain and range. Now, if you notice, this 2 is a positive 2, so that's going to tell us that our parabola is going to open at the top. All right? If it was a negative 2, it would be upside down, and it would be like this, and it would open downward. See? So we can fill in a table of values that will satisfy this 2x squared. All right? And we can find the domain and the range. So here's our table. If we've got a negative 2, then the y value, or the function of x, is going to be an 8. If we've got a negative 1, it'll be a 2. If we have a 0, it's going to be a 0. And we just do the math, and if x is a 2, let's say, We'll make that easier because there's no negative. If x is a 2, then that means we have 2 times 2. That's a 4. And 2 times 4 is 8. See? That's how we got the 8. If x is a 1, that means we have 1 times 1, which is 1. 2 times 1 is a 2. So the function of x is a 2. See? We can plot these because these are ordered pairs, aren't they? And we can make our parabola. And it's positive. It's opening at the top. This domain is all real numbers. If you look, it's going 0, negative 1, negative 2, and it'll continue. And then this way, it's going 1, 2. See? The domain is all real numbers. See? Even fractions and decimals. But the range, if you look at this range over here, the function of x, it doesn't go smaller than 0, does it? It goes from 0, and then it gets bigger. So the y, the range, is greater than or equal to 0. So we can write this in set builder notation. If you don't remember set builder notation, we did it back in chapter 9 a few chapters ago. There's a link in this video's description that you could watch a couple videos to remind yourself or learn about it if you don't know. All right? And we put it in these set brackets, like this, these set braces. And it's read as the set of all y such that y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay? So, just remember that the x is the domain, the input, the x value, the x coordinate, and the y is the range, the output, the y value, the y coordinate, the function of x. Okay? You might want to write those down, too. That could be helpful. Because I know these words can become real confusing sometimes. So, if we have a table of values and we still have our function of x is 2x squared, we can plug in different numbers and make our graph. If the function of x, if this x is a negative 4, then we're going to do negative 4 times negative 4 because that's x squared, isn't it? 
and that's going to give us a positive 16 times 2, that would be 32, see? And if x is a negative 1.5, that means we have negative 1.5 times negative 1.5. That's going to give us a positive number because it's two negatives. And we multiply that by 2 and we get 4.5, see? If x is a 0, then the range y, function of x, is a 0. If it's a positive 1.5, times 2, it's going to be 4.5. If it's a positive 4, it's going to be 32. See? We can graph it. It makes this very steep slope, doesn't it? Look at the slope of that line, how steep it is. So the function of x is greater than or equal to 0. See? We substitute values for x that will make this function true. And we can write our solution at in set builder notation. So this f with the little x in parentheses means the function of x. It means the output. And all quadratic functions, they're also called polynomial equations of degree 2 or second degree, have parabolas as their graph. The linear ones we did a couple chapters ago are polynomial equations of degree 1 or first degree. All right. We know the vertex is going to be at 0, 0 for this one. And the axis of symmetry is going to be this y axis because of how the function is written, because it's this little version. See? It doesn't have that plus bx plus c at the end. I'm going to talk about that in the next video. So our next video is 12.4c. I'm going to talk about how to graph a quadratic function by using the vertex and the axis of symmetry instead of a table of values. And of course, if you want to look at any of the previous videos we did leading up to this one, in case you're getting a little confused, all those links are going to be in the description of this video. You can just go and click on them, all right? If you're really confused, you might want to start back at 12.1, all right? And then watch them leading up to this one. All right. So now let's find another way to graph these, all right? I'll see you next video. Bye.